Dogs, man's best friend. With nine million dogs populating the country, they are present in one in every four UK households. But despite their puppy dog eyes and their furry faces, it is estimated that over 200,000 people are treated with dog bite related injuries each year in the UK. So, what are we doing that is making man's best friend so aggressive? Dogs have been our furry companions for over 10,000 years, loyally standing by our side since our hunter-gatherer days. So it may be of a shock to hear that the number of dog attack victims has risen almost 40% in less than a decade. Many people are asking, what is it that is driving our four-legged friends to aggression? And what can be done to prevent it in the future? three-year-old Labrador that was rescued from the pound. Little is known about Hector's past, but he seemed irreversibly terrified when he was taken into the care of Rachel Trafford from Morland's Dog Rescue, based in Leek. The early video footage of Hector, it was in the council pound, and he was trying to stay safe. Um, he was growling with his hackles up, his body language was quite low to the ground, tail was between his legs and he was retreating backwards and trying to gain distance from people. At that point had someone pushed Hector into a corner or demanded contact with him, he could have then escalated his behaviour and had to use aggression in order to get the distance he was asking for. So when he first arrived it was imperative that we allowed him time to be alone when we felt that he was wanting physical contact, we started in a low arousal game of play with balls and toys, which then became a focus for him, rather than it being under pressure to interact with us. This is called counter conditioning and desensitisation. A lot of his puppy-like behaviours, like mouthing and excitement and jumping up, are still because he finds this, the situation stressful. We have to wait for a little bit of calmness, don't we? Once we were confident that Hector's stress levels um, were at a low manageable level, we then set about changing his emotional state and allowed him to go into different environments. A rough start to life for Hector means he has not been given the opportunity to adjust to our modern world and needs to be correctly trained in order to combat his fears. Rachel takes him into Leek Town Centre every day to allow him to get used to the surroundings. Anything new to him poses a challenge. What I want him to do is get used to the smells and the environment and relax in it. So it's not essentially an obedience training session, it's just a, hey, this is okay, Hector, everything around here is fine. He's done really well today. He was, he's relaxed a lot quicker in the environment today. Um, each time we come out, he starts to be a little bit more relaxed and a little bit calmer sooner. So, yeah, generally really pleased with him today. If potential aggression is something we can so easily train out of our mutts, then why is it becoming such a problem? Welcome to Crufts, the world's largest dog event. Having been around for 100 years, Crufts celebrates all things dog, making it the perfect place to explore the perceptions of dog aggression. Most dogs are not born aggressive. They, it's learned behaviour. They do blame the wrong end of the lead, particularly where the media is concerned. The media love to vilify certain breeds. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier, for example, is a lovely dog, it's a lovely breed, and yet it gets a bad name in the press. But if anything, it's going to lick you to death. There's also the perceptions of dangerous dogs as well. People become afraid of certain breeds which might not be warranted. So it's about education and it's about making people aware of what they should be doing around dogs. I mean, we don't say to children, it's alright to walk out in front of a car. We always teach them to be safe around roads, you know, stop at the zebra crossing and look left, look right. So we should give children some instructions about dogs to ensure that they stay safe. So, are we really a nation of dog lovers training the wrong end of the lead? Generally, people make dogs more aggressive. I don't believe it's a dog breed. It's the owner, I think, the way they're treated. Do I believe dogs are inherently aggressive? Um, no. 
no more than any other animal, no more than me or you. We're all busier, we've all got less time. Of course that affects the dogs because they're not getting as much exercise and mental stimulation and everything else. And, and, and within that, they're not getting the quality training and the rehab that they need. So which dog is more aggressive? The Doberman, the Mastiff, the Chow or the Labrador? So to look at, I would assume that the probably the Doberman was the more aggressive. Probably a Labrador to be honest. I don't know, I would say the Chow because they're probably unpredictable. What about out of the Jack Russell, the Shih Tzu, the Dachshund or the Poodle? Shih Tzu? Uh, Jack Russell. It's also dog. Surprisingly, the Chow has more reports of attacks doing bodily harm compared to the Mastiff and Doberman, with our lovable labs coming in at a close second. And, even more shockingly, out of the four smaller breeds, the Dachshund was crowned most aggressive, with one in five having bitten or having tried to bite a stranger, and one in twelve having snapped at their own owners. Even the Poodle ranked as more aggressive than both the Rottweiler and the band's Pitbull. Really? Oh, interesting. World-renowned dog trainer and behaviour expert Victoria Stilwell helped put to rest the speculation that certain breeds are more aggressive than others. Aggression is a learned behaviour, but it's important that every dog know how to do it in order to be safe and survive. Really, if you're to define aggression, it's the dog trying to increase distance. So whether that distance is from a person or another dog, that dog is trying to keep itself safe. Aggression comes in so many forms. It can be a micro body freeze, where the dog tenses, to full blown showing teeth and lunging. It's easy to see the more overt signs, but it's harder for people to see the more subtle signs, like a little lip lift, or just the stare, or the tail getting tense, the paw lift. Some aggressive dogs are incredibly quiet. You always expect the big breeds to bite you or the ones that are listed in the press as dangerous. But the dogs that have bitten me, I've only been bitten three times by a dog in my career. Uh, one was a Chihuahua, one was a miniature Schnauzer and one was a Collie. I've never been bitten by any of the Rottweilers I've handled, Dobermans, German Shepherds, Pitbulls, any of the Bull Terriers. Never been bitten by any of those dogs. So it's a myth that only certain breeds will bite. Every dog has the potential to bite given the right circumstances. And what we want to do is reduce those circumstances. We are a nation of dog lovers. And at the end of the day, it's not the dog's fault the way it's turned out. It's an irresponsible owner or a misguided owner or an owner with some very wrong intentions that's caused it to be that way. In my experience, and it's just fact, any breed of dog can be a great dog. Any breed of dog can be aggressive. It almost seems as though we are an ill-informed generation, unsure of what it is we should be teaching. So perhaps education should be something that is taught within our schools. I think a lot of it is down to the adults responsible for training and looking after the dogs. If it's not done by parents and families, then school has a responsibility to keep them, like you say, road safety we teach, we teach about healthy diet, we teach about PSE and social skills, and I think dogs is part of everyone's lives and they should, should be taught how to deal with them safely and interact with them. There's a lot of stuff in the media when you see children that, or adults that have been attacked and it does remind everybody and I think it's, it's mainly pe how people control dogs and how they train them and I think a lot of people sort of just assume that uh, because something's happened that that particular breed is dangerous when it might not be. Uh, as an adult, where's my dog education come from? That's a very hard question, I don't know. The world appears to be stuck in a rut of incorrect training methods and therefore reinforcing negative behaviour from our furry pals. Back in Staffordshire, Rachel continues the process of readying her terrified lab for a new home. Stress is closely linked to dog aggression. Dogs will always signal that they're uncomfortable and try and get distance before using aggression. And when the dog has used all its coping strategies and it's used all its signals for distance and they've been ignored, then it may bite. But before it gets to the bite stage, there'll be lots of other signals that we just don't see. <laughs> So 
sociable now and loves contact. So he'll be ready for a home really soon now. We're just looking for the right place for him. Very quickly, won't we? Through positive training methods, Rachel has transformed Hector from a nervous wreck into a bouncy, playful Labrador, the perfect oh. companion. Hector is still waiting for his forever home, though he is in the midst of meeting many potential new owners and may even go into training to become a police service dog. Love it or hate it, we are dog's best friend and we need to tune into their behaviour and body language in order to understand how they are feeling and to reap the love they are capable of emitting. But for now, we need to keep on educating dog's best friend.